The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to our latest 3M technical webinar. This is the fourth webinar we have been hosting in this series and uh, today's broadcast will be hosted by Senior Application Development Specialist Andy Marks. Today he, will be, he has been with 3M for 29 years working within the aerospace industry and today he will be discussing replacing of chromates for corrosion inundation without, in, without compromising performance. So without further ado I'll pass you over to Andrew Marks. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just being enjoying, I don't, just being enjoying your lunch. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about, as uh, Harry's uh, introduced, introduced, about chromates, um, where they get used, what sort of processes they get used in, and the te and the recent developments in obviously replacing chromates, as, as, you'll, as you'll see in the presentation. Uh, there's a, <clears throat> a drive to take chromate out of the uh, supply chain in the aerospace industry. It's already happened in other industries, uh, and, and now the pressure is on to remove these um, particularly nasty uh, elements out of the out of the process, out of the supply chain. So let me just go through uh, with an overview. So historically, um, when you're talking in aerospace. The corrosion uh, inhibition of metal surfaces, and in particular aluminium, uh, has historically relied, relied on using you know, hexavalent chromium compounds. Uh, these are found in all sorts of uh, products in the aerospace industry, uh, paints, uh, surface pretreatments, structural bond primers, uh, and even polysulfide uh, sealants. Now, the toxicity uh, and calcium new properties of chromium based uh, have been known for quite a while uh, and this has caused the governments in global governments particularly the US and even the EU agencies to start tightening up the you know, posing new restrictions and tightening up the uh, amount of these materials in the supply chain these tightening regulations uh, in particular in Europe which fundamentally is reach uh, is driving now the development of new types of primers, new coating systems that are both capable of meeting the uh, tighter regulations while still capable of delivering the same level of corrosion protection as the historic uh, hexavalent cr uh, prime, chromium prime, pr based primers did. And it must be remembered that actually in automotive they've actually driven these out of the automotive supply chain in 2007. And the aerospace had a derogation, uh, if you like, from this simply on the safety grounds and the, the fact that chromium seven, uh, chromium six compounds were the singly the best method of uh, inhibiting corrosion. And hitherto, nothing had been developed, or nothing could uh, been developed, if you like, that was capable of, of delivering the same level of corrosion resistance uh, as these chromium compounds. And that is, of course, uh, uh, until now. So let me just uh, go through exactly what uh, these corrosion, uh, sorry, chromated uh, compounds do. Well, in service, moisture, and particularly al uh, metal alloys, uh, aluminium in particular is, is obviously a, a, a pretty worst case, but most metals will react with oxygen. And what happens uh, with that is it forms an oxide layer that then actually can actually migrate itself under an adhesive bond line or a paint bond line uh, <coughs> and cause uh, potential premature or uh, interfacial failure of the adhesive or the paint. The chromate salts themselves are, are hygroscopic, so they absorb moisture and also they will then, in the presence of moisture, uh, dissolve uh, and deliver a sort of corrosion protection to the alloy um, by sort of forming uh, chromic uh, oxide layers on top of the metal and these then act as a barrier to further moisture causing the corrosion. The sort of chemistry of this is not really fully understood how these chromates actually actually protect the surface but it's historic, you know, these have been used historically for 30, 40, 50 years and it's been, yeah, there's a, there's a huge uh, history uh, of using these products so it's generally accepted that the chromates are 
is the best method of uh, providing corrosion resistance. These then chromate, <coughs> these chromates, uh, and again, in, in the particular case of aluminium, will actually enhance the, the original uh, passivation offered by the oxide structure from anodizing. Uh, and they also act as uh, adhesion promoters uh, for, for, for the paint in the adhesive. Uh, just as an example of what happens, you can see here in the, in the picture here, these are just general uh, overlap shear test specimens that have been subjected to uh, a salt spray environment for about uh, 500 hours. And what you can see here is we, the dark areas are the actual uh, two-part stru two structural uh, epoxy adhesive. And what has happened is the moisture has built up, migrated in from the edge, built up an oxide layer underneath the adhesive surface, between the adhesive and the aluminium in this case, uh, and has built up the oxide, very weak oxide layer that under load and under stress has failed. And so therefore you've got a, a very low, uh, in this case, a, a low cohesive value um, and, a, and a relatively cat really cat catastrophic failure. So let's look at the um, environmental and uh, occupational health landscape. Um, yeah, as we've as I've mentioned, yeah, corrosion inhibition of aluminium, particularly aluminium, and aluminium is, uh, is is by far the most reactive of the metals used in aerospace. Titanium is also used, but that's nowhere near as reactive. So fundamentally, it's the aluminium that is the, sort of the Achilles heel, if you like, in, in, in this. It's a very you know, lightweight metal and has lots of uses, but it, one of its big problems is it is vulnerable to, to, to corrosion. The, yeah, the toxicity uh, and carcinogenic problems of <coughs> chromium-6 compounds are well known. They've been around for a very long time. Uh, and um, they're known to be, you know, they are carcinogen. They're, they're, they're damaging to the uh, aquatic environment. And most sort of <coughs> prime, uh, bond, uh, structural bond primers and paint primers are also um, solvent solution, so you've got a very high solid content, so you've got uh, volatile organic compounds coming up in there. And also the other issue is is the waste control, the control of the waste stream of these products because there is chromium salts in the waste. So therefore they have to have uh, separate waste streams and a, a very special uh, handling of the things. So they are a, a bit of an environment and um, a bit of a nightmare to, hand, uh, to, 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 to use. Now, our friend, the uh, European Chemical Agency have designated uh, chromates, all, all chromates, if you like, as substances of very high concern. And so there are reach sunset dates uh, set. Now, it's 2017 for sort of uh, potassium and uh, sodium chromate salts and dichromates, and it's 2019 for strontium chromate salts. Uh, now, strontium chromate is the main compound used in structural bond primers. And so by 2019, Either uh, companies using these products either will have to um, for, reformulate them out or uh, not use, use non-cremated alternatives or pay a, a, a levy uh, to the European Union uh, to continue to use the cremated uh, products. But uh, you need to, as the sunset date is now 2019, there needs to be, I think it's 2017 by, you need to apply for permission to uh, use these products if you are going to carry on to continue to use them beyond the sunset date. Uh, there is a levy that needs to be paid to the European Union per year based on the amount that, uh, that you are continuing to using. So the regulations and the, the, the occupational uh, health issues uh, are driving the you know, development of new primers and new coding systems that are capable of meeting these tighter regulations, but still deliver the the uh, same degree of uh, corrosion resistance, uh, and given the aerospace is such a, a very safety conscious and conservative, uh, and quite rightly so, uh, market, then and you're up against 20, 30, 40 years of flight history, bringing in new product technologies from a long-standing uh, uh, product it, it comes up against some resistance. So you need to demonstrate with reasonably good certainty that the product you are now bringing in will continue to meet the same performance levels. So the challenges we've got uh, are going to be, firstly, reduce the amount of uh, hazardous materials, 
uh, and, and we're talking chromium six salt and also the solvents for, for, for the health and safety reasons I've highlighted. Uh, need to be able to reduce the processing time, thus reducing their cost. Help to reduce the waste or the waste, uh, speed, especially the hazardous waste such as the chromium salts as I've highlighted. And uh, but of course, without compromising uh, the performance and there is yeah, plenty of existing benchmarks out there. Let me touch on the first use of these uh, chromated uh, compounds. Uh, first one is uh, structural bond primers. So what I want to do is just, just highlight the function uh, of a structural bond primer, what it does. Um, and you'll see where the little chromium uh, comes into it. So let me, yeah, uh, what, what does a structural bond primer do? Well, it, what it does, it preserves effectively the etched and structured surface that you put into your alloy, your aluminium or your titanium. Uh, during uh, anodizing, so it prevents that uh, and, uh, and thus extends the time between anodizing and the time you then have to do the bonding. So it, it keeps that extends that sort of open time, as it were. Yeah, it protects the metal, the metal itself or the alloy itself from damage, moisture contamination. Uh, these are uh, cross-linking epoxies uh, with with chromates in them. So you cross-link an epoxy when it's cured, it becomes very tough. So therefore it uh, it's protecting the surface from abrasion and damage, etc. Uh, and they also uh, enhance the physical uh, properties of the joint by allowing the adhesive to flow a lot better. Uh, and they impart long-term corrosion resistance, uh, but with the use of obviously these chromates. And as I've always said, majority of these cor corrosive hemic primers contain certainly high levels of, of, of organic compounds there are roughly about 15 10 to 15 percent solids so there's a lot of solvent that ne uh, needs to be uh, evaporated and, and controlled and also they've obviously got the uh, hexavalent chromium in them so what we need to do is um, we've started a program several three or four five, five years ago of looking at non-chromated alternatives to these things and so we need to go through about how we assess these uh, performance uh, and how we demonstrate the same level of performance that you would get between a non-chromated and a chromated uh, primer. So what we do is um, firstly we obviously prime the panels exactly the same process, same same preparation of the metal etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we subject it to mechanical testing and also uh, visual uh, analysis of the um, Corrosion, growth of corrosion uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a corrosive environment, and it's normally a, a, a salt spray sort of type of environment. And you can see here from these panels here, I don't know if it's very, it's quite slight. There are, we take panels and we put scribe lines in there. There's a diagonal uh, cross across each of those panels that is scratched down to the bare uh, metal below. They're then immersed in a uh, salt spray fog, uh, and then we actually physically, um, uh, optically, uh, check for the degree of corrosion and the, and the number of corrosion spots along 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 the actual bare metal cross uh, scribe line in there, uh, and you can benchmark that against uh, standards. So that's a physical, that's a, an, an optical way of assessing the degree of corrosion. The other thing, of course, then is how well does it perform when bonded in a structural joint um, under load uh, and under the sort of corrosive conditions uh, that an aircraft, you know, ship or whatever it is, is using these things would, would come into. And so we can see here what we've got here is a, uh, uh, an analysis of um, chromated versus non-chromated uh, primers bonded up with a structural uh, adhesive film uh, and then subjected to a crack growth test where you insert a, a, a wedge into the bond line uh, with a given force and then watch effectively that crack grow under the stress that's uh, that, that's the, the, the wedge is giving it uh, and obviously the shorter the crack growth the better um, so you can see here uh, on this um, graph here the, the first column these this column here is a standard chromated product and the two in the middle are new non non chromated uh, water-based uh, alternatives and you can see that the crack growth is fairly uh, comparable 
and the important thing to notice uh, as well is, is not necessarily the headline uh, value in terms of crop growth, but the failure mode. What you're looking for is you're looking for looking for a lack of uh, delamination or, or, or failure, interfacial failure between the primer and the substrate. So here you can here if you look on the, on, on the pictures below that the the red sort of pinkish um, colour you're seeing is actually the adhesive, uh, and so the adhesive is failing cohesively, which means the bonds to the primer is okay, and also the bond of the primer to the aluminium is okay under those loads. Had that had there been a uh, corrosive uh, attack under the bond line, what would have happened is you would have seen, like the previous uh, first slide I showed you, you would have seen that the adhesive have come clean away and you'd be looking at bare aluminium from underneath the primer. The same uh, type of aging, this time for a slightly longer but a different test method. This is a floating roll appeal, which again puts stress into the bond line. Uh, and what then you're looking here is you're looking for loss of uh, peel force over time uh, in the exposure conditions. And you can see again here we've got a the first one, EW5000, is a uh, standard uh, solvent-based cremated primer. And the two uh, other primers are water-based non-cremated primers. And you can see that there's relatively li very little difference uh, between the peel performance from time zero up to 120 days uh, when the actual joint has been immersed into a, uh, uh, a hot, wet environment, which promotes corrosion. So that's bond primers. The other type of uh, chromate containing uh, compound or material are what's called conversion coatings. Now these are chemicals that react with the metal to actually uh, partially oxidize the surface, uh, allowing, <coughs> excuse me, allowing you to get much better bond uh, to, the, uh, to the metal. Um, being chromated, they do provide a degree of uh, corrosion resistance and there are different types there's phosphate based ones which are normally uh, applied to um, low carbon uh, sorry carbon and low alloy steels mainly to increase the wear properties of it and got, there are chromate ones that are we're familiar with that are used for uh, as, uh, to enhance as an enhanced base for painting and or adhesive bonding um, the problem with, of course, most of the, of course, these are, these are still, of course, chromate containing materials. And so what we're looking at now is different, uh, different technologies, non-chromated technologies that could provide the same level of uh, bond for paints and or adhesives. So many years ago, um, so many years ago, about 20 years ago, the Boeing Company Corporation developed a sold out technology. Um, these are non-cremated bifunctional um, coatings that you apply to a surface, one end of the uh, polymer chain uh, reacts and hydrolyzes with the metal surface, and at the other end you have different functional groups uh, that bond on to um, paints or adhesives, uh, epoxies or polyurethanes, thus forming a, uh, you know, a link, if you like, a chemical link between the metal and the paint surface. And by controlling the type of um, end groups, you can uh, design these specifically to link into different type, uh, particular materials. And these materials are used can be used for uh, bonding of structural uh, adhesives uh, uh, as, as a repair scheme for repair of aircraft or are they more probably and commonly more widely spread to use to uh, as a, as a pre-treatment for painting uh, of aircraft. So I'm just going to go through the first of these, uh, the first of the applications uh, for um, these conversion coatings, uh, and that's aircraft painting. Um, conventional way of tr treating aircraft uh, was to strip the aircraft, strip the, the old paint off, um, clean it down with a, an alkali cleaner so to, until the surface was uh, water, what we call water break free. Uh, that indicates that uh, the surface energy is, is sufficiently high enough to um, 
uh, gives you a good clean surface. So it's an indicate, uh, a test that indicates that. Then uh, you would then have to start to mask up the aircraft, the, the, the more delicate bits of the aircraft, the aircraft seals and, 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 and composite parts, etc. Uh, because then you're going to have to then deoxidize the surface, uh, then rinse it, then apply a, a chromated conversion coating that would uh, turn the uh, turn the aluminium the aluminium into a uh, give it a slight strong oxide uh, layer on it that then would provide the paint anchorage. Then you would have to rinse that off. Then you're going to you know, mask up and then do your priming and your painting. With the sole gel versions uh, and 3M have a, a version called AC131. Assuming you get a water break free surface after taking the paint away. All you then need to do is supply a mist on the AC130, allow it to dry in coating, so you're not actually rinsing it, and then just go onto your paint. Um, what that means is you're taking away the oxidizer, you know, the uh, grit blasting, uh, and mechanical abrasion because the AC130 actually bonds quite well to any oxides that are build, build up on the aluminium skin uh, of the aircraft. You're taking away the need for using a chromate. Uh, conversion coatings, you're taking away the chromates out of the equation uh, and therefore you're also taking out the uh, rinsing element because the 131 will actually dry in situ. So there's no very little uh, waste generated, very little hazardous waste uh, generated. So just go through from the, the, the from health and safety, uh, there are no chromates need to be used, no furrows, no strong designing uh, to, to actually prepare the metal surface prior to painting. The impact is Conventional system will use about, you know, for, for a standard sized uh, single aisle uh, aircraft, will probably use about 380 litres of the chromated result, of the actual chromate coating. That, that's bad enough, and it, it's only good, it's quite a lot of uh, chromated material around. But then, of course, you're generating a 1,100 litres of rinsed water, which is leaching away some like chromium that has to be contained and dealt with in, in, in a special waste stream. With the, 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 the AC130 sole gel system, no chromates and no waste. So you're saving, you know, from a health and safety perspective and time perspective, in terms of processing, it's a much quicker, cleaner, safe operation. The one thing, of course, what we need, the downside of using, uh, perhaps uh, say there is one, uh, using sole gel, is because not being cremated, it doesn't impart as good a, a, a corrosion resistance as uh, as obviously a chromium uh, compound would, and so you need to then apply on, on top of the uh, sole gel either a, a, a corrosion inhibiting paint primer, pipe paint primer, or a, a, a structural bond primer to, to enable it you know, to impart the, the, the uh, corrosion resistance that you would have got from a cremated conversion coating. Question then is, 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 well, does it work? You know, how, again, are these any better? Is, are the sole gel systems any better than the, the conventional sort of chromate-based conversion coatings? Um, you can see here in the, in the slides here, we've got uh, two separate tests, and these are uh, rain erosion tests, where we put uh, aluminium aerofoils into a, uh, a rotating uh, arm that flies through controlled rain droplets at a given speed, etc. And what you're then looking at uh, is obviously we, we mask certain areas, and then you're looking at then how well or how, how poorly the paint is anchored to the surface. And you can see around the around the rivet areas here and on the leading edge that on the standard chromated conversion coating, the paint has actually been removed, um, and so. Aesthetically, that's an issue. Of course, if obviously paint's being removed, that is the, your first barrier uh, to corrosion protection, but you, you start losing your paint. And then, of course, and, and your primer underneath as well, then you are down to the bare metal, and therefore you have a, a, an entry point for corrosion. So the longer the paint and the more intact the paint coating uh, can remain for the longer period of time, then you're offering that you're giving the aircraft a greater chance uh, in terms of its overall corrosion resistance. So you can see here on using the AC130 that the, you know, the degree of paint loss is considerably less. So what we're saying is, is whilst the AC130-131 doesn't have inherent 
corrode, cor corrosion inhibiting properties because it's not chromate containing. What it does give you is much better paint anchorage and it's the paint that is actually providing you know, a degree of corrosion resistance because it's a physical barrier, obviously, to the moisture that's going to react with the aluminium. Uh, that was aluminium. The same applies to titanium, uh, to etched, you know, to, to, to etched titanium. Uh, in order to get a do good paint anchorage, you have to use some really aggressive. Uh, because titanium is uh, such a strong, uh, generally unreactive uh, a, a metal in comparison to aluminium, that is. You then have to use more aggressive uh, etchants to get a, a surface texture in order to bond uh, paints to. You know, here you've got hydrofluoric acid and some nitric acid etches, phosphate fluoride, both of which are particularly aggressive and particularly nasty. Um, uh, chemicals in terms of uh, their health and safety issues. So applying a coating of AC131, you, know, you can see that the, on a tape anchorage test where basically there are cross hatches put in, you lay the tape down and pull it effectively, uh, and then you're looking at the anchorage of the paint and the metal. You can see on the, on the, on the AC131 slide, there is no paint loss. Whereas on the other ones using standard uh, etchant techniques for titanium, there is a great deal of paint loss. So not only does it perform better, but it's also reducing uh, the health and safety uh, burden that there is in, in, in preparing uh, titanium. So what we're going to look at is, is using soldier chemistry. Okay, I mentioned previously that soldier, obviously, you can uh, manipulate the uh, a bifunctional nature of the of the sol gel to be specific to, to, to different types of applications. So we've looked at what bonding to paint, and now we can look at using sol gels as an adhesive bond primer. So again, the answer to the question is, is, is how good is it? And so what you can see here is we have, again, a set of tests, uh, flogging roller peel tests. This time this is actually on titanium, uh, where you can see that we have uh, grip blasted uh, and primed with a structural bond primer uh, sets of titanium uh, versus uh, purely just grip blasted and coated with the AC130-2 this time, uh, adhesive bond primer. Uh, and what you can see, not only have you got a huge increase in the, in the peel performance, but what is interesting is the failure mode. What you're getting with the grip blast primer is a failure of the primer to the titanium. So you're not getting a true measurement of the adhesive performance. What you're getting is a measurement of the peel performance or the adhesive performance of the primer to the metal. Uh, and in any uh, structural bond, you want it will fail at the weakest link. And in this case, it's failing pretty catastrophically, uh, about 30, 40 newtons per 25. Whereas with the AC130 uh, grip blasted uh, titanium substrate, the peel values are up at 300, 250 even after a thousand hour immersion, total immersion in water. And again, you can look at the same sort of thing again for the overlap shears. You can get again, the overlap shear performance is considerably addressed because again, you're not measuring the true measure, the, the true cohesive force of the structural adhesive. What you're measuring is the uh, adhesion here to of the structural primer to the uh, titanium, whereas the AC130 provides a much better adhesive bond and therefore the failure mode is switched into the cohesive mass of the adhesive uh, and so you're getting a true representation of the adhesive performance uh, of, of, the, of the structural adhesive used here and this these pictures are you can see here highlight that uh, on the uh, on the left uh, you can see bare metal here bare titanium where the adhesive and, and primer have been pulled away from the surface uh, so you're measuring here but here you can see you have the adhesive film both on the substrate uh, on both sides of the substrate I should say and so it's a cohesive failure of the adhesive which is a much uh, higher form of failure mode or much uh, you get much higher values much higher strength values if you if you can induce an adhesive to fail cohesively than you can if you make it fail uh, here what's called uh, in an ad adhesive manner
So that was titanium. Um, I mentioned that titanium is probably not the most uh, susceptible uh, to corrosion uh, attack, if you like. So yeah, is it any good on aluminium? So we've done, provide, we've done the same sort of test with aluminium. And what we've done here is uh, we have com uh, compared using uh, a sole gel coating against the standard method of anodizing. So phosphoric acid anodizing, the PA stands for phosphoric anodizing. Anod phosphoric acid anodizing, I should say, beg your pardon, uh, which is a standard uh, industry method of uh, anodizing the surface of aluminium to generate this uh, structured oxide layer that gives you better anchorage. And so we then combined that with a structural bond primer, one of the previous ones I mentioned. And so what you can see here in terms of propagation uh, or growth of, a, of, a, of an induced crack into the bond line is that using... Uh, uh, so sole gel versus uh, a standard method of anodizing there's not a lot of difference in terms of uh, performance uh, and we can then back that up with uh, some climbing drum peel tests again not a lot of difference um yeah phosphoric anodizing you know, it's not in all co you know, in all the circumstances a, a practical way of uh, preparing method particularly in a repair situation where you've got a component on an aircraft that needs a repair or needs a structural bond repair, it's very in fact, it's almost practically possible to act to anod re-anodize that surface. So the way method of preparation would be to use a, a grip belt or abrasive, take away the old oxide layer, depaint, take away the old oxide layer, apply a, the, the, the AC 130-2 uh, as, as a form of repair to give you a, a semi-structural -stru bond rather than having a, a chemical form of etching the surface. Now, I mentioned previously that uh, using sol gel, that sol gel what, itself, but not being cremated, doesn't necessarily offer a, a tremendous um, degree of corrosion resistance compared to sort of uh, other chromate conversion coatings. Current, so therefore you have to then combine that with uh, a, a, a structural bond primer uh, in, in, for, for adhesive primaries that does impart a degree of corrosion resistance to the bond structure. So, but currently um, there are no cremate, there are no water-based cremated primers that can actually be used with uh, sole gel treatment. Um, they're not compatible. There is only one in the marketplace currently, uh, but it's, that is cremated. So what we're looking to do is to generate a non-cremated, water-based structural bond primer that can be used with uh, the sole drill treated uh, surfaces. Um, and so you're then for, you're taking the chromate out of the entire structure and also providing a, deg you know, a, a, a degree of cr crack growth comparable to the existing system. So again, we got uh, our friend the crack wedge crack growth test uh, where we're looking at uh, yeah, the, the smaller the crack growth, obviously the, the better, because that means the system is resisting the, the energy at the tip of the crack to, to, to stopping it propagating. Uh, and you can see here that EW5005, which is a development uh, non-cremated uh, water-based primer in conjunction with uh, sole gel, not only matches the uh, current benchmark uh, cremated primer, but it also actually gives you uh, better um, crack growth performance than using the standard phosphoric acid anodizing technique to prime the aluminium in the first place. Uh, and then you can back that up again where we've benchmarked the um, corrosion resistance uh, of EW5005 versus a standard uh, here, a standard chromated uh, product. So after 2000 hours, the non-cremated product actually is performing and you can see all the white bits of cro uh, corrosion growth there on the bottom picture of this, the bottom picture of 3917. And you can see that in comparison to the EW5000IS that there is relatively little uh, corrosion growth. So the other, tech, the other class of products, if you like, that uh, use these sorts of uh, cr uh, chromate inhibitors, or sorry, chromate corrosion inhibitors, are um, sealants, uh, polysulfide sealants. 
Now, these are generally used uh, on aircraft, particularly in the fuselage area and uh, for you know, the sealing of airflow, uh, air, air gaps. You know, obviously, fuselages are pressurized, and so you don't want leaking of the air out of the pressurized cabin uh, because you're going to reduce your pressure and you've got to keep adding extra energy to keep that pressure up to the same level. Now, currently, most fuselage sealants contain corrosion inhibitive uh, chromate containing sealants obviously for the areas of, areas of high corrosion risk and that's around the galleys obviously the lavatories the bilge areas and obviously another aircraft that are exposed to particularly corrosive environments obviously uh, carrier based aircraft etc industry is, is now actually again reach is driving this uh, and, and, and legislation in the US is driving this and industry is moving to non-cremated and non-chromate corrosive inhibited sealants. It's a bit of a mouthful, I'm saying, but I understand what the difference between the two, because there is a degree uh, of confusion uh, in terms of what these products offer in the marketplace. 3M, our 3M non-corrosive, non-chromated corrosive inhibited sealants, I can't say it myself, uh, potentially replace chromated sealants in many applications. Now, these provide ac active corrosion inhibition without using chromate, as opposed to the non-chromated products that merely do not promote corrosion. They do not inhibit it. And there's a big difference between active inhibition and non-promotion, if you like. It does say it's like, sounds like it's semantics, but it, in terms of you know, 30, 40 year uh, lifetime frame, lifetime of aircraft, um, there, it, there is a big difference. And we've demonstrated uh, in salt spray tests that there's a big difference in terms of the uh, inhibition of, 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 of corrosion between the two types of products. So again, the cost of uh, using chromate sealants is starting to increase. Okay, yeah, regulatory prices are going up. Again, waste disposal costs. Uh, these cartridges that contain these materials have to be disposed of again, specialized uh, and expensive uh, waste streams. There are lots of controls from the use from a health and safety and an employee standpoint, quite rightly. Uh, and also, these days, there's a lot of public pressure on to not use chromates. So, I'm just going to summarize in, in, in summary. Yeah, we've developed, three of them developed low, low volatile organic content structural bond primers, comp have comparable corrosion and mechanical performance to most commercially available chromated primers. You know, the sole gel technology, uh, we have developed sole gel compatible primers that have some similar performance on aluminium sold out treated to a traditional uh, acid, uh, sorry, traditional etched and anodized aluminium surfaces. The sole gel primer gives you know, superior performance on grip blasted titanium uh, when used, compare it against a, a conventional chromated primer. It gives you much better bond strength. And salt gel conversion coating is, you know, provide a, a low in, environmental impact, cost-effective way of actually providing a pre-treatment prior to paint and adhesive bonding. And the thing about all these technologies is they're chromate-free. So, I hopefully I've rushed through. I mean, appreciate it's quite a complex subject and everything else in the half hour that I've been the slot I've been given. Um, you know, rush through a technology. I think the presentation is going to be available online. My, my, co my marketing colleagues nodding, so I think that's the case. So it will be available on YouTube and sort of places should you, should you want to re review it back. Um, you know, obviously, because I say you rush through. Uh, May thank you, thank you for the time for listening to us. Uh, and if there are any questions, we will try and handle them now online. Okay, many thanks for listening. Uh, thank you very much.
Uh, we've got a question through from uh, Christopher Page, uh, and he asks, uh, how does the sole gel perform as a pretreatment uh, for some PPG products, CA7012 and CA7049, I believe that is. Uh, I think they're non-cremated uh, or cremated epoxy primers used in the uh, aircraft painting, I believe, from, from memory. Um, I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong. It should work quite well. I mean, the fact that they're epoxy-based uh, technologies, uh, the sole gel has the, 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 the sort of bifunctional end, if you like, uh, or the, the, the end that's not it not bonded to the aluminium to aluminium or, or, or metal in this case should provide reasonable anchorage into most epoxy substrates uh, epoxy is a chemically not too dissimilar type of uh, what yeah, they're fundamentally the same backbone chemistry so i don't expect there to be necessarily any difference um and they should provide a, a reasonable uh, anchorage uh, for those types of paints be they chromate chromated, non-chromated uh, top coats or primers. I hope that sort of answers your question, uh, Christopher. <laughs> if not, come back to us and we'll, we can provide some further uh, clar uh, clarity. <laughs>